Hey everyone, my name is Ken with Amp Event Professionals and today in this short video, I'm gonna show you how to give a toast. So let's be real for a second. Given the opportunity to give a toast at the wedding is an absolute honor. The bride and groom put trust in you to represent them well in front of their friends, family, and even coworkers. So don't mess it up by ripping on the bride or ripping on the groom. This is not the time to do that. Negativity is out the window at this point and you want to represent them well in front of their friends and family. So now let's talk about how to hold a microphone. Now you want to be heard all the way in the back of the room so you're going to want to hold the mic just like this. It's about an inch from my mouth. I'm talking into it and I'm certainly not bringing it all the way down here because you want to make sure again the guests are able to hear you in the back of the room. Also do not tap the microphone. There is no need to tap it, it damages it, and you don't want to damage this microphone because it's a $500 mic. Now you also don't want to drop the microphone as well at the end of your toast. Big no-no, make sure you don't do it. The bride and groom do not want that bill at the end of their wedding. Now we've all heard the term, practice makes perfect, right? Well this is no different, make sure you practice. Make sure you write it down. Make sure you put it in your phone. However you're going to do it, make sure you're prepared. Now the toast should be two to three minutes long. That's the ideal sweet spot. So make sure you practice and do not go up there and free ball it. Be yourself. I can't stress that enough. Don't go up there and try to be somebody you're not. The guests are going to see through the facade and nobody's going to want to do that. Keep in mind the bride and groom like you as a person, not somebody you're not. So make sure you go up there and kill it and be yourself. So to drink or not to drink, that is the question. Well, you definitely want to be in your comfort zone. So if drinking is going to put you out of your comfort zone, probably not a good idea. Now, if you drink on the weekends and you have a beer here and there, maybe a good idea to have a beer here and there before your actual toast. But if you don't normally do that, probably not a good idea. Keep it family friendly. There's no need to walk in there cursing like a sailor during your toast. You could have grandparents, flower girl, ring bearer, other kids around. No need to do that because then people lose interest and you don't want people to lose interest because remember, you're representing the bride and groom. This next one I can't stress enough. There is no need to introduce yourself. The DJ MC had already done that for you. Now he introduced you as the best man, maid of honor, maybe the sister or brother of the bride or groom, there's no need to walk up there and say, hi, I'm Ken, brother of John, the groom. No need for that. The DJ and MC already did that for you. Don't mention how you hate public speaking. This is an immediate turnoff for the guests. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear somebody that's confident. They want to see somebody that's confident. Remember, this is not a speech. This is a toast to the bride and groom, the ones you love. Avoid negative subjects. We don't need to know how much of a player the groom was back in the day or you know how the bride you know had this rough breakup. There is no need for that. No need for negativity on the wedding day. Make sure you keep it positive because if you keep it positive, you're going to get positive results from the guests. So now let's talk about the good stuff, right? Let's talk about the topics. So how about your relationship to the bride or groom in whom you're representing the day of? How about a childhood story that made you think, wow, Jack, like this really painted a picture of who he is as a person today. How about watching the couple grow as a couple? Maybe you thought, man, I know that Susie's going to marry Jack one day because I can tell what at this point, at this point in the relationship, you know, this was the time we went out and you're like, that's the man that she's going to marry. These are all great things to be talking about. These are things that, you know, tell a story. You want to play on that emotion. You know, you want to really just get the guests to capture, you know, and just capture their minds and tell that story about how the couple got started, okay? You could always use a famous quote. Those are always good too, but don't overdo the famous quotes. I've seen it. It's a train wreck, right? And most importantly, raise your glass at the end of it, okay? I see this too often where it just ends. We don't want that. You're raising a glass. You're toasting to the bride and groom. And this is not raise your glasses. This is raise your glass to the bride and groom. Obviously you want to use their names, but 
that's to give you a little bit of an idea of how to end it and make sure you always end on a positive note. Last but not least, let's talk about delivery. So number one, don't be nervous. Remember, you've practiced, you know exactly what your toast says. There's no need to be reading from it. You know exactly what it says. Now use it as a guide by all means, but don't read from it. It loses interest and it's not nearly as sincere to the bride and groom. And remember, you're representing them and speaking about them. Now with that also, you don't wanna go wandering around, okay? The bride and groom want the best pictures and video possible on their wedding day and they want you in it. Okay, if you're wandering around, there's no way they're going to be able to capture you and their facial expressions in the frame when you're telling that awesome childhood story. So I hope this helps you out. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in a few weeks. Now, go get practicing. Take care, everybody.